Yo right there guys, this is Cobb and welcome to another episode of Dueling with Cobb. We've got some clips against an Arms Warrior and a couple against Frost Mages. Some really, really good duels to look at and learn from, so I hope you guys enjoy this video. And let's just get right into it. First set of duels are against Aizen, the Arms Warrior. It was a really, really close series. You can see I start out the duel, as always, with my Succubus pet and my Demonic Circle at a good distance away from me. I don't want to get my pet caught in any AoE stuns. Fears if I can help it. So I dax all here on the first pet seduce. I want to lock Aizen down as much as possible with seduce, shadow fury and blood horror while bursting. My goal is to force either trinket or a few of his big defensive cooldowns uh, as early as possible and he does trinket which is really good for me. However unfortunately for me I did wander too close to my pet here and he is going to catch both of us in a fierce. He goes ahead and pops recklessness but things aren't too bad. I instantly use bargain and um, I know that if I can survive until my pet can land another full pet seduce uh, there is a decent chance that I'm going to be able to burst Aizen down with my second bunch of control spells and my second Daxel. I do use my heals here too, there's no reason to hold back on those in my current predicament, uh, but I am able to land that full pet seduction. Now I know that I have to finish him off here, uh, I need to keep him locked down so he can't pop any defensive cooldowns, but instead of having my pet recast seduction after this Shadow Fury, I have her begin attacking instead and this turned out to be the wrong call as Aizen is able to get up rallying cry and a shield wall. So now I'm in a spot that I really do not want to be in. I have no more Dark Souls to use. I have basically no full CCs left to survive with until I can set up another best attempt. Uh, so I'm just making desperation plays here. Ultra Diad pet seduces, but there is no favorable end game in sight. Honestly, um, I sort of know by this point that the duel is over. Uh, well played by Aizen. This next duel starts out in a very similar way. I do buff up with Twilight Ward at the start. Uh, just to negate any spell reflect damage, but my game plan is the same. I want to land a ton of CC uh, and damage as quickly as possible, forceful cooldowns I can, then try and survive until I can land the second and hopefully final chunk of damage to take a win. My pet does not get feared here and the second pet seduce uh, forces his trinket, which is going to be so important when it comes time to go for the win. I also want to mention how good it is to land all of your CC almost one after another. Uh, Blood Horror and Shadow Fury are both on 30 second cooldowns, so the closer together you use them, the better they sync up later on as well. When Aizen goes ham here, I use Unending Resolve and Bargain before my heals. I want to build up some embers uh, before using my heals, just to make sure I get the most ember tappage out of them. Now myself and my pet do get feared, and I would normally never trinket a fear like this, but by trinketing, I also free my pet from the fear. And this is so important because I know that I'm going to need a pet seduction here and now if I'm going to take a win with the second Dark Soul. And this time, after the Shadow of Yuri, I land another pet seduce to keep Aizen locked down. And from that, I'm going to be able to take this second duel. This next duel is against Elorok, the Frost Mage. And I was kind of experimenting with a new strategy in this one by using Havoc Glyph to very quickly kill off the Mage's Water Elemental. It's a pretty effortless tactic as all you have to do really is uh, Havoc the Mage Pet. And it usually ends up dying and you get yourself some easy burning embers. And sometimes you can even shadow burn the pit, which is obviously pretty huge as well. And you can see I've got Havoc up here and this pet is just melting. Uh, I get Frost Jord, no deep freeze off of that though, so I'm able to shadow burn the pet. Uh, and Elrock panic ice blocks and out of that, he's going to throw out a frozen orb, but he has no pet freeze to keep me rooted near that, so I mortal coil him into a fear. Another awesome thing about using the Havoc Glyph to kill off the pet is the ember generation. I'm sitting on just about full embers right now. Uh, so that is a ton of healing ready to go whenever I need it. I don't damage too much into all the time and right here uh, things just become a bit of a slugfest. Notice though how I do ember tap every once in a while if I am on full embers. Uh, there is no point holding on to four embers if you're lacking even just a little bit of health. It's almost always far more efficient to just spend an ember on tapping to make sure you're always building resources. Out of this deep freeze I use my big heals and most duels this never happens. You almost always want to be using your dark bargain or unending resolve before your heals. Uh, and that is because it usually takes us some time to build enough embers to really make our dark regen count. But in this case, I was on lower health and I had a ton of ember taps ready to go, so it seemed worth. I portal towards Elrock here and howl him, and I'm pretty sure that he's going to trinket that. So I'm ready with a mortal coil, I land that, um, and I'm about to finish the duel when a psychopathic warlock appears and ends up finishing off both Elrock and myself, which is pretty unfortunate. But hey. And this next duel is against another Frost Mage. I get polymorphed in the opening here straight away. Um, so I'm just kind of waiting with my finger over my spell lock key. I try and lock out his Frostbolt. He duked that though, so I decide I have to make something happen. I unbound Will and fake a fear, but he does not count a spell, which is well played by him. I still want to make this unbound Will worth it though, so I coil him into a fear. Um, I want to go a ham here and maybe force his first Ice Block, but Cider Death actually Ice Blocks before I even start casting any damage. Uh, and this is actually really good for him. Uh, as he's going to be safe from the first half of my Daxel. While he's in that block, I get the Havoc up on his Water Elemental, 
And then I get off some sweet instant damage with the end of my Daxol. I get a little bit lucky with the spell lock on his Frozen Orb. Uh, it sets up a fear that lets me avoid a ton of damage right now. And when I see that he has all the time pop, there is no point in hitting him. Uh, so I actually swap onto his pet and I'm able to land his Shadow Band. As I mentioned in the previous duel, I usually think that it is best to use Bargain or Unending Resolve before your heals. Unless you have four full embers and I do that here with Bargain. Um, I take a good chunk of damage here while silenced, but I still have my trinket and my heals, so I'm not too worried. I managed to coil side of death on his presence of mind, which was a complete stroke of luck, but I'll take it, and with my second Dark Soul up, I get his second Ice Block. While chasing, I hit his pet just a little bit, then Havoc it uh, and swap back onto Cider once he's in range. I get Novid, so I spell lock here, land a little bit more damage, then I'm going to portal away to try and avoid his procs. He does blink after me though, and he puts me into a deep freeze, and I have no more defensives to effectively sit this, so I decide to just trinket. I then juke his counter spell with a fear, but he uses the time to get off a cheeky evocation, and when he pump sheeps me after that, I unbound Will a little bit too quickly. I have nothing to stop this follow up sheep. Uh, whereas if I just waited a second or two, I actually would have had Mortal Coil ready uh, just to put him into a fear. I will get that off in just a sec though, and from that coil, he has no more box, so I will be able to round off this duel. And this next duel coming up will be the one that I play out with music. I don't think I played it quite as well as the previous one. There was a very risky Unbound Will that I'm not even sure was the right call, but it definitely makes it interesting. So this episode has just been a little bit shorter than the rest, and I feel it's better this way, uh, personally at least, and I don't want videos like this to be too long-winded, but definitely let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments below. If you want to be involved in the next episode of Dueling with Cobb, message me with your battle tag and a link to your armory either here on YouTube or on Facebook, of course. Uh, I get a ton of messages, so try not to be too disappointed if you don't get an ad, but anyways, um, hope you like the jewels, guys. Thanks again. Stay Destro, and we're going to catch you all a little bit later.